Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode What is it? Douche I'm not at the gen yet Comedy Oh! Oh! oh. What does that mean? Oh! 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 Once upon a time it was actually a craft At the early days maybe the two Ronnies The Ron Atkinsons And the likes In those days There were not that many sexual innuendos Hardly any swear words And Controversy and being edgy wasn't something that would qualify you to being a good comedian. But nowadays, it is exactly these three things. But only being edgy and controversial about certain groups of people and certain issues. Otherwise, I mean, that's where the edginess runs out when it comes to talking to power or talking to the people that actually are paying their wages. Obviously not, isn't it? That's you know, let's let's be edgy to the people that can't respond or that are weak. That brings me on to this Isaac Butterworth guy or whatever the hell his name is. Yeah. So this is an Australian comedian who recently did a well. I think the stand up was last year, but it just resurfaced because I think it was on YouTube or something. Have a look. This Australian extremist stormed this building, this mosque, this room where people were saying their prayers and going about their business. And for me, the saddest thing about that, it wasn't the 52 people who were killed. It wasn't the countless others who had their lives changed forever because their family members were taken from them. It was the hundreds of people that night who couldn't make it home from nightclubs in Christchurch because all the cabbies were dead. <laughs> Of course, yeah, just like anybody, you are well within your rights to be angry, to be sad. I don't know, it's something that just, it's like someone takes your heart and just squeezes it in front of you. Because as a Muslim, we know when we heard about 50 of our brothers and sisters, yeah, and these are 50, they include a child, they include the elderly. They include our sisters and our brothers. It was the hundreds of people that night who couldn't make it home from nightclubs in Christchurch because all the cabbies were dead. Cab drivers are people who are linked to being foreign. He's in a cab. People don't like them, they're very rude. D. Roosevelt. No, get out. What? what? I don't drive his kind. My kind? Americans, I don't drive American. I mean, you see how they're being depicted in these movies and likening these innocent people who have been gunned down and that terrorist incident was being filmed and streamed live. Likening them to these people who, who people hate. Not only is he otherizing the victims, but it seems to me like he's condoning the act by underplaying and trivializing what took place. It's like that joke that we always hear, yeah? When somebody gets run over and the person comes and says, Yo, is the car okay? Yeah, and that's funny because what you're doing is you're trivializing the, the importance of the person that's been hit by the car. Yeah, it's a very famous joke, gets used in a lot of sitcoms and movies. And that's literally what he's done here. But he's done it with a wound that is still so fresh. Yeah, and he's got the reaction. Yeah, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, she had to speak out. And a lot of people are frustrated and angry. And I would say, uh, rather than sending him death threats and angry swearing at him and that sort of stuff, don't play into this sort of stereotype that people have of Muslims anyway. Be classy, yeah? By all means, express yourself, yeah? Use your words to express your frustration. Report the videos, report his account if need be, rather than going on social media or emailing him, you F this and F that, let's avoid all that, yeah? Because it just arms them and then they're gonna end up making a video afterwards or another special. Oh, here's the reaction that I got from the Muslim community. Here's another reason that white slavery needs to be reintroduced. I hope you die of cancer. I'm gonna rape you, I wanna rape your mother. You piece of shit, you putrid dog, you insensitive prick. Now what was very interesting is people naturally will liken this incident and go you know what how comes he doesn't speak against the Jews yeah or the Christians or the Hindus. He has spoken uh, about the Jews he did make a holocaust joke 
I don't think you would dare to make fun of the synagogue terror attack yeah, or other terror attacks. Oh yeah, let's look at what's happened in the last week when it comes to anti-Semitism. Yeah? You guys know the uh, grime artist Wiley who got cancelled by social media and his manager dropped him, the Home Secretary got involved, there was a media frenzy. Nick Cannon, yeah, a comedian, the same happened with him. Yeah, He literally got cancelled, there was a media frenzy, all that stuff was going on. And of course the actor Seth Rogen, yeah, very famous actor, I'm sure you guys um, know at least one movie that this guy has been in. And he was saying stuff that he was lied about Israel, uh, it was inaccurate stuff. And I mean, he was forced to apologize as well. Jeremy Corbyn of the Labour Party, he was very pro Palestinian. But what's happened now? I mean, Labour got destroyed, yeah, because of two main things one was their stance on Brexit and the other anti-Semitism to such a degree that Jeremy Corbyn has stepped down and he's still getting hounded by the media and their replacement is a Zionist with a Jewish wife. Yeah, I'm not saying this, Yeah, I'm just reading the headline and of course the New York Times when they had a cartoon which was regarded as anti-Semitic and the whole department had to get shut down. Yeah, so look my point is this, I have a lot of respect for the for, for the Jewish and even Zionist community because they were a people that were oppressed and they put their head down and they worked themselves to prominent positions where they are now able to stop anti-Semitism or stop you know criticism or whatnot from a higher level. Unlike Muslims who anytime something happens, a hashtag trends or we just become angry or frustrated. People record that frustration and it's like a circle, bites us in the background, it worsens our image. I mean our orientalist image is bad enough, yeah? A really good book by Edward Said on orientalism, yeah? Which is this whole cab driver, this uh, harem kind of, and this desert Bedouin kind of image that they have forced onto us through the indoctrination. I mean for the last couple of hundred years, there's been only 12 movies yeah, that show Arabs in a decent light. Yeah, we're too busy buying football clubs and doing this and doing this, wasting, wasting hours of being manipulated politically and even in our daily lives, yeah, just being you know entertainment junkies, just hooked on to Netflix, hooked on to social media, hooked on to our games console and that's it. We're living in a, in a cuckoo land, in a dream world. So may Allah give us the ability to understand the, I mean stuff like this is happening because they know the Muslim community is not really going to do much. Yeah, what, 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 what can we do? Yes there are people like Cage and Five Pillars and you know you got all these organizations mashallah that are doing good work but of course we need to see this sort of stuff so eventually we can occupy powerful and prominent positions that we can actually get stuff done rather than just getting a hashtag trending. Alright guys let's leave it there, I'll see you guys next time inshallah. Asalaamu As Alaikum